professional watch check out the numbers in the back and everything the number inside the movement see what you think so we just got our first watch in from the trade so let's see what it looks like this recession gets crazier more and more people are selling other people fake watches and people are getting screwed over another one today So my dad just sold this Yacht Master 2 Mercedes hands oh. to the clients. Is the client came already from the back? Show him the watch. They yeah. came from California. They Cali? came from California. Yeah. Good, Charlie. Nice to meet you. First Rolex. First Rolex. How'd you find out about us? Uh, RG Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Nah. You came from where? LA. LA? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's good now. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So, do you need to go to the back, right? And finish it up? And that's it? Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, just I know um, fixing the, the time and the stuff is kind of different with the. I'm going to show you. Yeah. I'm going to show you. So, it's actually very simple. So, I'm just going to teach him how to set his uh, watch on time with his first Rolex. Very important. So, okay. Once you pull the crown out, right, you're going to wind it about 30 times with two fingers. You can go like this, but then you put uneven pressure on the crown, mm -hmm. so you don't want to do that. You want to do two fingers always. 25, 30 times. If you haven't worn the watch in two or three days, go under and over the crown and pull out. You're going to hear it. Mm -hmm. You heard the click? Yeah. Then you just set it on time. 10.29. Last trip. Last, last minute stop before you left, huh? <laughs> 1029, you said, right? Yeah. Dysfunction, don't worry about it too much. It's just a 10 minute countdown timer, so I'm gonna restart it so it's in the 10 okay. minute position. Technical difficulties, so there's a lot of things to memorize, so I just have to go on the internet and retouch based on how to set that 10 minute You forgot the only 27? Oh my god. Do you know like, can you set a 10 minute countdown? I don't remember for me. Sometimes I don't remember that you're my son. I don't wanna remember the watch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So first rollers, we already have AP? Yeah. Oh man, you're good then. Come on now. Congrats. Thanks. Hey, I'm going to see the serial and everything, right? Of course. Yeah. I'll show it to you now. Because yeah. what happens is once you guys get the watch just, in your hands... I'm trying to get it from my knowledge. This is a very complicated ring that I'm working on. Nowadays, all these rings are made in cut, but uh, the customer wanted it to be done by hand. They don't make these rings by hand anymore. Long time ago, I made a ring like this with another jeweler, and be between both of us, it took us a week. So I'm, I'm already on a week. I'm probably a day away from finishing the ring. It's almost impossible. You know, when you had two rings like that, that interlock, now the, the, the stones cannot go over this ring because then the stones are going to be hitting the finger. So before you make, start making the holes, you need to close the ring. You need to mark them. First you need to mark them. You need to close the ring and start opening the holes and putting each stone at the same height. So they have to be perfect. There's no going around. They need to be perfect. We were gonna go purchase this sky dweller, but we're doing a careful inspection on it, and this is why it's important to inspect the watches. The watch is legit. I know we've had fake watches in here, but it is a real watch. However, if you notice this bezel, you're gonna see it's a little bit dual, and it's blunt, these edges, compared to, if you compare it here to this rose, you're gonna notice the edges. You can't feel it on camera, but you can definitely see it. These come more to a point, and this is more rounded out. Now, the links, if you look the links, the links look beefier, right? And then you see these little indentations and the little lines. So then you're gonna also notice here, when I hold the watch sideways, you have a little bit of play, but it's hard with new watches to tell the play. So when I move it around, you see you have a little bit of wiggle there. Then on this one here, it does have play, but it is stiffer. You can just see how the edges are rounded out here versus they're very straight there. You can see the separation of the link. Let's look at the clasp. Last but not least, when I want to go do a function check, when you, the sky dweller, you pull out the crown, 
It's not supposed to do anything. It's not like other Rolexes. When you move the command ring bezel to the left, first position, you change the date. Second position, change the jumping hour hand. Third position, go ahead and rotate the 24 hour, uh, uh, sorry, the 24 hour uh, second time zone disc and the minute hand as well. On this one, the watchmaker didn't install a bezel properly. Pro the watchmaker didn't install a bezel properly or the watch is having some issues. As you see here, in neutral position, it's changing the date. When you go here, now it's in neutral. Here it doesn't work. And here this didn't click into place, it's just going into place. And it's rotating the 24 hour disc along with the minute hand. We're just gonna go take this watch to the watchmaker, go get inspected, make sure nothing's internally wrong with the movement and it's nothing that can be fixed with just a simple basic service. Can you call Betty? Betty's a box professional. Betty! I know. <laughs> Betty, can you come here please? Miss Betty Marceline, the most desirable actor know, here in the YouTube it. channel. I watch it. She knows okay, boxes. Betty. Betty knows boxing. Betty, is this box? He's selling the box, Betty. In Spanish. Me You're gonna have to call this. Me la tienen pelada. Okay, he's here. He wants to sell his box. Who wants to sell his box? What's wrong with this box? This color is different. This color. And what about this? Is the outer box good? Yeah, 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 the box, the box is not good. The, the, the green color is not good. This I could tell, easy. The watch is good, but the box is... It's not good. Yeah, that, you see, this is a box that I could tell, like this. <laughs> of course, look at it. How about the watch, if we have to say? Fake. <laughs> Betty, who's not a professional, just spotted her first fake watch. No, no but look at the way, Bobby. Okay, anybody could tell you. Yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let me, let me break it down real quick. Well, we know it's Look, so we actually just sold one yesterday. Let's go through real quick because this gentleman has to go. So thank you for allowing me to record this. First thing, the bezel, the inner bezel, the height where the dial is. Okay, so you can see the height here of the Rahal is way too tall. The way that this bezel is curved down like this, at this angle here, it swoops down. It's very poor. This is not gold. This is gold plated. You can see by the side of the links here that you can see the stainless exposed Wait, There's space here, this is humped, it's curved, right? This feels like die cast metal, these little parts here. The way this pops open, you see this play right here on this? Tia, let me see your date just real quick. So this is a completely different model, but let's just check this out right here. Very minimal, and this is, mind you, Betty has worn and abused this watch, as you can see it's dirty. She has not taken a shower or cleaned her watch in the last six months. And then this is not supposed to be running. This is actually a countdown timer, which it's actually acting as a second hand here. And then the actual second hand on the watch is stuck because it's a false dummy dial. Right there. So take a look at it. This 10 minute countdown, regardless of timer is going down. This hand is stuck and this hand is stuck here. The font's all off. The pushers are completely off. The size of this crown is huge. Out of all the super clones we've seen, I would say 10 being right on. This is a number two or three. Very bad fake, very bad fake. We've been getting a lot of fakes. I guess people have been seeing on the YouTube channel and using us to authenticate it. I can authenticate any watch for you. Just keep in mind, we do charge a small fee, but come by. Where are you from? From Australia? Australia. Australia, yeah. yeah. Twenty thousand five hundred. Twenty thousand five hundred. Yes. That's a tax. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, if we pay cash, different price or yeah, same yeah. price? Yeah. How you doing, my friend? Hey, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Hello. You're on your honeymoon. We are. Yes. You signed already. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, so I've already spent all my money, so you don't. Spend your money. Good, you already, at least you're done with the ring and the wedding. That's the best thing. I went through that not too long ago. Yeah, so. oh, congrats. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. You from Australia, I heard? That's it, man. Yeah, we came all the way here. We said to have to stop. You know why? When you say Australia, the first thing I think is great white sharks. Do you really? You don't think, <laughs> of, uh, you don't think of kangaroos? <laughs> yeah, I think of kangaroos are too, and yeah. sharks. Like here in Miami, all the young women yeah. use 41s, big ones. See, in Australia, yeah. all, the, all the, the young, they wear 36. Backwards. Oh, yeah, 36, yeah. Box and papers, huh? Yeah, full set. Full set. He's buying this, uh, the Blue Sea. The Blue Sea 41. The famous 20, Blue Sea. 2023. It's a minor. 
nice purchase, nice visit. Thank you so much. Yeah. Goodbye, Casio. Hello, Rolex. Are you ready to win a Rolex? Help us trade. Hello. Hi, is this Josh? Hey, how are you? Yeah, this is Josh. Hi, Josh. It's Natalie. Sandra told me you were interested in trading my D Shock for something. Yeah, <laughs> I was watching the video. I'm like, oh, cool. Um, so I have a bunch. If you want to do like a, a video, I'll show you what I have and. I don't know, you go from there. Um, let me get my phone then, I'll FaceTime you. Wait, I don't hear you, are you muted? He has a lot of options though. Okay, oh. now I can hear you, okay. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Cause all the, I mean, I like citizens, so I have a lot of citizens and all the other stuff like. You were quick, you were quick on it. You are the first one to call. I, I just happened to be watching the video. I'm like, hey, why not, right? You have a lot of watches. I know, but I, I stopped buying because uh, I'm going to buy me a Rolex, so I'm like, I'm done with, you know, I like Citizen because they're really cool, like, they keep really good time, but yeah, I'm like, okay, I, I need a big boy watch, so <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to see if I can give you something that's not going to be more than the G-Shock. Um, there's this one also, if Seiko. That's cool. That's like cool, that. too. I like that. Let me see. That's cool. I think I like that Seiko watch because I might have some clients that would be willing to trade for that one. This is an automatic, by the way. Yeah, that looks good to me. Let me show you my watch. Yeah, Make sure like you still want it. <laughs> yeah, this thing there. is like almost new. I barely use this also. Let's do it. We're going to do it. So you want to take? Definitely. So how we can do it is um, if you can ship the watch to us and then as soon as we receive it, we'll go ahead and ship you the G-Shock and we'll go on okay. from there. No problem. Yeah, that works. Can you guys send me uh, like a text? I guess with the info, and I, I can drop it off. What time is it right now? Yeah, I can drop it off today. Of course, and thank you for being the first person to reach out and trade with us. Cool. Well, I, I, you know, maybe uh, when I get ready to buy my Rolex, I'll, I'll go down there. I've been saving up for a Rolex is like, like you said on your video, I had other things. Like I had things to buy first. Like I bought my house, my cars, and everything. And now, like I'm, I'm actually like going to school right now for uh, cybersecurity. And I, I'm actually going to be going down to like Pembroke Pines like starting next month. And I think I, I said like once I graduate, that's going to be like my graduation present. So I'm when you come down to Pembroke Pines, we're maybe like a 25 minute drive from there. So come down and come visit us. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. And whenever you're ready, since you were the first one part of it, we're going to take special care of you when you're ready to buy your Rolex. Okay, thank you. You're All right. awesome. Thank, thank you, so buddy. Much. Appreciate the support. Have a nice day, Josh. We'll send you that message. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. So somebody brought a very cool, unique collection for me to check out. Hey, he wants to sell. You want to sell these pieces. Where did you get this watch at? Passed down. Got passed down to you? Yes, Do you have any idea of what you want for these pieces? Any asking prices? Are you familiar with them? I'm not familiar with them. It's a D serial, so it's probably one of the first. It says Turbion number 49. My favorite part is, if you notice here, it does not have a crown on this. It actually has this little, like, ratchet wheel on the back. And you can see this beautiful watch right there. You have another, which is Vatron, AP, Frank Mueller. That kind of looks like a Patek, which I kind of like this Frank Mueller a lot, too. A Hublot and a Cartier. So they brought this watch for us to authenticate it, I guess, or just to make sure it's uh, original. And it's from a Ukrainian boxer. What's the name of it? Uh, his name is it's GGG. So I guess his name is GG. Gustavito Golden Globe. <laughs> Gustavito Golden Globe. <laughs> Gustavo Golden Globe. Some Ukrainian famous boxer, okay? And like you guys know, Hublot, everything is limited, you know? When you see a watch from Hublot, expect to be a limited edition Hublot. It's pretty nice. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess, no, I'm gonna look at it right now. And just to, by the way, for looking at the watch, you know, watches, I think they talk to me when I see them. And right off the back, just to see the finish that this watch has, if I would have to make a statement if it's real or not, I would say it is real. For me, this watch is real. This watch is a copy. <clears throat> if you notice, he says he thinks, and the reason we're not 1,001% sure, we're gonna bring in a professional. So the reason being that Hublot is very, very inconsistent. 
my friend, I have a watch here that I would like for you to give me your input. So it's missing two screws. Oh, no. The finish is very poor on it. Well, and I, the screw I, I heads look are at very the back. The dial is fucking perfect, and the painting is perfect. The dial and the painting is perfect, but you, you know how Hublot the finish is. It's very hard. I'm just saying, remember, guys, I always said, I, this is what I think, and my opinion sometimes doesn't have to count. If my opinion is just my personal opinion. For me, I'm still going to go by the watch is real. You know, Hublot is a little bit more difficult. Why? Because Hublot is very inconsistent with their finishes. <laughs> Come. I checked the dial. The dial looks perfect. The only thing I don't like is the numbers in the back, the way they're, they're stamped. But if I will have to go with fake or uh, real, I will say it is real. Can you loop it up, please? Yeah, I have mine. Loop, yeah. Oh, you have yours. Have, okay. He's a professional watch Check out maker. the numbers on the back and everything. The number inside the movement. See what you think. See, arriba el escapement. The bubble escapement. The whole torso. But I say roll. I mean, Hublot is very inconsistent. No, no. It's original. 100%. 100%. Once again, I was right. Yeah. This is why. Hugh Blood and me and CRM have this beef. <laughs> Goodbye, Hugh Blood. So we just got our first watch in from the trade. So let's see what it looks like. It's supposed to be a Seiko 5 Sports. What's his name? Josh. You really, really packed this thing. Three hours later. Is he? Seiko. Sorry, Josh. My D-Shock doesn't come in a box, boxing card. <laughs> That's a watch collector that cares. Wow, it's pretty nice actually. So we got our first trade in. We traded this G-Shock and we traded up to the Seiko 5. So if you have something better than this that you want to trade for, call a store or DM me at CRM Natalie and we can get a trade going. We're trying to get to our Rolex. Help us out. We're getting a lot of calls of people that want to sell their watches. Yeah, we are buying watches, but we're only buying watches that are a good deal right now. So is it time now to buy watches? Well, they are the lowest they have been in a, in a long time. So we picked this amazing yellow gold 228-238 day day 40 with the green dial. It's a lot lighter than the than the olive. Different. It's one of my favorite spreads, you know. Then we got this yeah, Master 40 millimeter. Bought it from the same guy. Then we got this 5712G, white gold. Then we have a Batman, 116710, BLNR, the old reference Batman. They are gonna go to uh, get detail and uh, service and then get it ready for, for retail. And then we picked this chocolate 41 millimeter, Royal Oak, Chrono. And then we have this Daytona two-tone. And we have a Safari. Royal Oak Offshore. Besides all the pickups that my dad showed you we got, we also have this on consignment from a fellow client. If you guys don't know what this is or wondering why this Mariner looks so strange, they got a 114060, a 40 millimeter no date sub, and they contoured the legs here to make them very, like a lot thinner and take off that fin, that hard edge. They took off their crown guards. They put a bigger crown on it. They put a semi-domed crystal, and they artificially aged the loom and the dial to make it look like a tropical with some nice patina on it. This project was done by Artisans of Geneve. You can see here in the back. And the only thing done to the rotor, because you know Rolexes are workhorses and they're perfect demise. Only thing done to the rotor is they put a 21 karat gold Artisans of Geneve rotor on it. So. This watch right here, I'm actually going to be doing a full review on it, so stay tuned. This recession gets crazier. More and more people are selling other people fake watches and people are getting screwed over. Another one today. Day 552 of getting a fake watch in CRM. Um, unfortunately, we have this lady here who she went to Europe with her husband and somebody told her, hey, come do this deal outside of the store instead of in their store. They told her that she he worked at the store. Yeah, and so did this. Now, if you guys saw, Betty was able to spot that fake Yacht Master 2. 
and Nati spotted this one here, this Royal Oak. Check it out. What do you? What are things that you notice without even picking this one up first? Oh, without comparing, well, I kind of already weighed that one, but I did feel the weight difference already. But it is really thick. It's thick. What else do you notice? And this, the back of this. I don't know the correct technical way to say it, but it just looks Mickey Mouse. <laughs> the movement? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look right. That's a very Cuban saying. Mickey Mouse. The thickness difference is very big difference. Uh, the depth of the inner bezel of the Rahal, um, the printing, the shade of black, just overall the fit and finish. The way that this AP bracelet curves, it almost curves all the way down. And then if you notice, it tapers here. Look at this taper, it goes smooth to the bracelet. Now if you go here, you notice it doesn't curve all the way down, it has a big large hump. And then it goes from a very thick case. You can see that the pins, they don't even align with the bracelet. Here you can see that it indents. The screws, how all the screws are. Oh, let's show the screws on the bezel here. There's a lot of space around. Let's look at the crown, the crown to the height of the bezel and the case back, the thickness of the case back. These screws are like randomly drilled into the side of the link. Look at this here. Yeah, Laser sure etching. Next I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put them down here so you can get B-roll. Look at the space here of the case back screws. How it just looks like a loose floating screw in there that's not fit and, and flushed. The big blue screw here. This thick fake rotor with an unfinished base plate. This red thing here. The engravings. They're all very, very poor. Now let's look at, obviously this is a 15500, so you're not gonna have the same dial printing. That's why this one says automatic and this one doesn't. But look at the shade of black here. The 15400s are very, very similar to the 500. Look at the height difference here, the thickness. Unfortunately, this woman, she paid $27,000 yeah. for this watch in Europe. And you can clearly see it is a very, very poor fake. I think that was a BS story. The lady didn't want to come out on camera. She came here to sell the watch, not even to verify it. And then she was like, oh, wow, he paid 27000 for it. I think if you really got screwed over, your husband got screwed over for almost thirty grand on a fake watch in Europe, then uh, you wouldn't be that calm and smiling. And, oh, my God, I didn't know. I'm going to go back in May. But that, that was BS. That was complete P.S. But either way, we got content and we got to show you guys how not to get scammed. We're going to inspect our watch here, which is supposed to be a Rolex Sumaner. What is it? 116610 LV. This is how to destroy a Hulk by doing PVD on the watch. See, they do PVD. It's very nice when it's brand new, but once you scratch it, this is what it looks like. And then if you don't know, to be able to fix this, you have to disassemble the whole entire watch, remove the PVD, and then do it again if you wanted to do it. I would remove it and not do it again if it could be restored. If it could be restored to the factory specs. Check for authenticity. Check so the year. And, and if check you guys don't know what PVD is, it's physical vapor deposition. And what that means is they're pretty much putting a it, you, that's why you see PVD DLC together, which is physical vapor deposition, diamond-like coating. It's a coating that is very close to the hardness of a diamond. This watch looks like it was worn a lot. And if you see, there's not a lot of scratches on it, just where the PVD wore out, it, it wore out, but there's no actual scratches on that because the PVD coating is very, very, very hard to do that. So for you to put this wear on it, you had to wear the watch a lot. A well, lot yeah, lot, on 2013, lot. it was in, in style a lot. Yeah, that That's was. That's when I first opened the store. Everybody wanted a PVD, the watches. Yeah, so one of the most common ones I would see was definitely Hulks. Mill Gausses are very popular with the green glass. Yeah. Sell deep CC dwellers. So let's say you have to purchase this watch. What would you take in consideration? Um, I would, even though it has a card, I would purchase it like a naked Hulk in very, very, very bad condition. So I think my number on this is gonna be 11, 12 grand. 11, 12 grand. I said $10,000. Just because, how long is it gonna to take to restore this back to factory specs? Maybe two, three months. Two, three months, that's exactly what I said. So you have to take whatever you spend on the watch, and let's say we make 10% on a watch, 
So they said three months, you pay 10%, you're talking about another $3,000 plus the process. Or the So let's say $10,000 plus three that you're going to lose or not making with that money, that's $3,000. That will put you at $13,000. And the process, another $2,000, $15,000, $16,000, I wouldn't do it. Okay. So the reason that I thought that number is, is because you're looking at it as a project. I'm looking at it as in put 300 bucks and sell it as is on Telegram or uh, to a dealer. See if somebody likes it. Well, it, it. Me, my mentality is I never sold anything in bad shape. I right. always had to say I like to sell, you know, watches but, but out of other dealer, top shape. Also. Yeah, yeah. It's a risk that you gotta take. He's taking it on a, on a, on a payment. Yeah. On a payment, you know, as a collado for five thousand dollars. So you should be safe at five thousand yeah. dollars for sure as a collado. I'm gonna have to make a video for all these comments that I'm getting about my beard. Shave it. Don't shave it. Carlos, no homo. Your beard looks amazing. Then I went the other day to a bar with my wife and some lady with a husband comes and is like, you have such an amazing beard. Can I touch it? I'm like, yeah, touch it. She's like, oh my God, but it's so perfect. And then you get the other comment. I got a comment on YouTube. You look like you're 70 years old, man. Shave the beard. I agree with, who, I agree with that person. Who do I please? But the most important thing is that my wife says, the tickles. So... I'm bringing in this uh, this old Bulova, Bulova movement. Bulova, this is a guy. He's kind of like a Russian here. <laughs> Russian used to wear a lot of Bulovas in Cuba. They used to wear a lot of Bulova watches. Are you Cuban? Yeah. This is an old watch from a family member? Correct, yeah. It's my grandfather's watch. Um, and you want to get a case for it? Correct. So the story is uh, it was a solid gold watch, um, and family came up into hard times, and they got rid of the, the case. Uh, with the gold, but the movement and dial were uh, were kept. You know that when you say that right now, this watch I could tell you is from the '80s, or way before the '80s. Okay. Yeah, and I spent hours trying to find it online. It's impossible. So. Oh, that's just on the '80s iPhone one though. You know, yep. Miami, you know, narcos used to wear this. I'm not saying that your grandfather, <laughs> grandfather was. It's been in in the back of a uh, of a closet for years and. I would like to get a case for it so that my dad can start wearing it again. Yeah. That's your grandfather. It was my grandfather's watch, yeah. That's so sweet. Learn, homie. Actually, I, you know, I'm going to try to see what I could do for this gentleman. There's a big bunch of guys that walk in here and say, my grandfather gave me this watch. I want to sell it. Guess what? I'm not a buyer. Your grandfather gave you a watch and you're going to sell it? You're in, okay? For selling what your grandfather took a long time to get and give it to you. So I do not buy anything that your grandfather, your grandmother, or your father gave you. If you're going through hard time, work hard, but don't sell that because you don't know how long it took them to give it to you. Good stuff right here. I have no idea how I'm going to help you with this. Yeah. I have an idea. You have an idea? Yes. What's up, Steve? Hey, I have a client here who has a movement and dial with a crystal of a Belova watch. Now he wants to restore it so his father can wear it. It has the hands, everything. It just needs a case and a bracelet. It is an automatic, so it's a 1950s automatic. I see M5 Swiss, I see Belova Watch Co. I see seven B-E-A-C-D, 17 jewels. And then it has the word 17 under the word jewels. There's a number 2369 on the opposite side of it. So, if we do a leather bracelet, you're probably looking at 150 bucks. If we do a metal bracelet, you're probably looking around two and a quarter. Okay, and then what about the case? Oh, that's uh, with the no, case. That's, that's everything. I heard you correctly. Between 150 and 250. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, yep. perfect. Yep. All right, let me go ahead and send you yeah, some pictures and of the of the watch, and let me get the client's info and let's get this process started. Saturday. That's okay with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, come by tomorrow. That blew my mind. 150 bucks to fix this? I thought he, I thought he was going to say like 1,500, two grand, three I grand. For five grand. And I was going to say, wow, I'll do it. Steve, you <laughs> fucked up Steve, the deal. Wait, wait, wait. Steve, yeah, 150,000. Oh, okay. A client who had his grandfather's Belova watch in the closet that he wanted to restore. It was just a movement in the dial on the acrylic. We had Steve come by the other day. He showed us some vintage pieces, so uh, Steve said he can fix it for us. So we're gonna, he just came by and we're gonna drop it off for him. And so 
that's the, the movement with the dial? Yep. And that's it. I think I know exactly what case this is. So he said they came like on a, on a that, like, that flat gold chainmail bracelet that looks like the Juvenias. But mm -hmm. he said he doesn't care if it's strap, gold, whatever it is. Do you have plastic wrap or anything? Because I got, I got a little box I can put this in with me. Like this? I'm going to assume it so needs serviced. So I'm probably just going to service it for him at no yeah. cost and just, just get, make what, what it. Just make it. On, on he thought, he uh -huh. thought it was going to cost him like around two grand. So. Oh god, no. So no, 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 no. I might uh, just quote me how much everything is. I'm going to give him a final call and that's it. But yeah, I think we should service I don't, I don't it. Gouge people. Yeah. No, no, but charge your fair price and you know what I mean. It's, it's your business, my friend. So. No, no, this will be awesome. This will be this will be really. It's gonna cool. be an amazing story for him too. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Today I have the pleasure to have my dentist here, <laughs> so I can I can smile because of her. So. Thank you. And now I'm the client, so I'm happy <laughs> to be here today. <laughs> so make sure you follow her, because she's great. <laughs> Thank you. She's looking for a, a day just um, a Wimbledon, but with yellow yellow gold. So Carlos is going to be sourcing the yellow gold one for him. He's taking the Wimbledon, which we all know is uh, one of the most desirable um, dials that we have in the market, and the Sun Dust.